So, welcome to my first entry in the special collaborative series where myself and Greg from the Gregola Horology Club are discussing what we call the workhorse of West Clocks, which is this. It's the Model 66 Movement, or Style 66, or just a 66. Um, a very famous movement among West Fox fans around the world. Uh, rectangular plates with these rectangular cutouts with um, diagonals there and there. Now, um, if you haven't already, I suggest heading over to the Gregor Horology Club's channel uh, to check out the first episode of this series, um, in which Greg has brilliantly introduced the movement, how it works, and the start of the story. So yeah, I'd, um, go and check that out now. So um, in this episode, we'll be discussing a particular aspect of West Clocks that's not often covered in the grand scheme of things, but it is the part of West Clocks that I can relate to the most. And that is West Cox's factory in Scotland, uh, which, despite being relatively little known to West Cox fans outside of the UK, um, it was situated in the Vale of Leven in Scotland, and actually produced over 50 million clocks in only 40 years of being open. So let's start from the beginning. So we can begin our story in the year 1939, which is when the factory was originally planned to open. However, due to the war, World War II, it wasn't properly commissioned until the year 1948. Now, um, according to Westlock's TikTok, which is like the museum, not museum, the magazine for the stakeholders, uh, from June 1947, which I found on clockhistory.com, Great website, check it out. All things West Clocks, all resources and everything, and some other brands as well. They were expecting the Scottish factory to produce its first clock by the 1st of January 1948, uh, which would be a low priced timepiece and would not fully be made in the factory as the parts would be brought over from the USA and Canadian factories, which are already open of course, and would only be assembled in the Scottish plant. And it was on the 21st of September as I said in the one of the previous videos about that. 21st of September 1948 that the factory produced its first clock, which would be a West Clock's Good Morning. Much like that one I assume. Uh, this is from 1949. And as you can see, and this explains a lot, because I've been wondering what this meant, as you can see it is made in the USA and UK. That uh, likely refers to the fact that many of the parts inside it were not actually made in the UK, but they were brought over from the USA and probably the likely uh, Canadian factories as well, instead of being made in-house. And the TikTok says that as soon as practicable, British made parts will be used and they'll add other models to the line, probably including the spur and stuff like that, and, and different dials and colours of things which around about 1955 you start seeing made by West Clocks Limited Scotland rather than uh, made in USA and UK such as on this 1960 um, alarm clock I'm not exactly sure what model it is uh, I think it's either called a spur or a trim you'd think it'd be a spur but um, it could be called a trim and I'll explain that another time but yeah around about 1955 you start seeing that so that's probably when they were fully producing movements in-house and they didn't need to say made in the USA and UK because they were literally just made in Scotland at that point. So by 1949, uh, when this one was made, they were producing 10,000 clocks a week and by 1950 a million clocks had been produced by the factory in total. From then up until the late 60s things were getting better and better as by the mid 50s they had to expand the factory and added watches to the product line and they also had over 1,100 employees by the mid-60s. Uh, over a third of the clocks they produced were actually destined for export across the world. However, in 1967 or 68, due to cheap clocks from Eastern Europe coming around, 400 workers were laid off. But the factory still managed to keep going, however, and the production picked up again soon afterwards. In 1971, 
The factory had a royal visit from the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh and Princess Anne. However, the decline of the factory began in the mid-70s, as in 1974, quartz technology was being discussed. And by the 1980s, it was dominating timekeeping. And the factory closed in 1988. However, the factory still remains and was split up and repurposed into facilities for smaller businesses. So, how is the famous Model 66 movement relevant to the Scotland factory? Well, the 66 is actually very significant because as you can see, it made the backbone of West Foxy products, as you can see from the back. I think um, Greg in his videos has showed you how to identify a 66 from the back. But yeah, uh, made up the backbone of West Fox Scotland's products. From the very beginning, in the first clock model, right up until the mid 60s, until it was replaced by the single key bend movement, which we can see here. Now this is a very late version with plastic parts in it, but the earlier ones are brass, but they were the same size and design. And um, yeah, they're definitely a uh, cheapening down, but they are a very, very cleverly designed movement and very compact. Now, without the existence of a cheap and basic movement, such as the 66, the factory would probably have much more of a struggle opening, as beginning with a more expensive range, such as the Benz, probably, like the um, Style 6 they introduced, probably after the 66 in the factory. Uh, that probably meant they could not have competed with the inexpensive alarm clocks already being produced by Smiths and LSM nearby. From the very beginning, in 1948 up until around 1965, these rectangular movements lurked inside the less expensive West Clocks alarm clocks and timepieces. Yes, they also had time-only versions which were basically the same, just with the alarm parts removed, assumed to save costs, with very little changes over time. Um, which makes them very maintainable, and even today, parts are plenty, uh, because, of course, there were so many of these made. But, uh, yeah, they're nice and simple to deal with as well. So, what are these two clocks here for? There's something very significant about these two, and why I picked them today. And that's because these are my oldest and youngest Scottish 66s. Here's the original style Good Morning which is like the same design as the ones produced from the start back in September 48. This one's from August 1949, and here we have another Good Morning, it's also a Good Morning, uh, from 1964, which also carries the 66. And despite the latest date stamp 66 I've seen from 1965, uh, by then many of the case styles, such as this one and this one, which would originally had a 66 in them, uh, were then actually being occupied by the um, smaller and more economical single key movement from the Baby Ben, such as this one. Good morning, they gave a new movement. They also scaled it down a little bit. And here we got Sleep Meter and the Jock. So as you can see, the same case, same size, but the movement um, is the later single key one, which makes it much lighter and flimsier. The 66 um, has a good weight to it as well. All the clocks um, are really good quality. I mean, they're not expensively made, but they are very solid. Um, and by the time they introduced the um, single key, the cases just didn't feel as solid, and probably because of the lightness of the movement inside them. I think this one's got an aluminium movement, like the one I showed you earlier. And yeah, you can just tell from the outside, there's definitely some cheapening going on. So that's it for now, and I hope you'll join me next time, where in the future videos, I'll be showing off some of the original Scottish West Clocks adverts from the time, going through the product range, and some real life examples from my collection, such as these. There will be a video on the variations the Scottish 66 had from 49 up until the mid 60s, and I will also cover the products of the Brazilian and Australian West Fox factories to an extent, I mean, best I can, despite very little information I found. And I think I will do a video or two on some 66s spotted in non West Fox clocks, and also some supposed copycats from around the time, and some time only ones. Uh, copycats including like the Weld Time, which I've um, showed you before. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you stay around for the next part of the Work Calls of Westlock with the 66 movement.